live. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Mortgage Coach Friday Mastermind. Every Friday, 9 o'clock, we are here to connect as a community. We are here to bring leadership, inspiration, tactics, strategies to you. Uh, today, joining me on this call, we have my co-host and wingman for the Mortgage Coach Facebook community, Todd Bookspan. What's up, Todd? You know, not much. Not much. I'm super excited uh, for today's content because I think it's uh, really relevant in uh, all of our worlds right now who are, you know, whether you're coming out of quarantine or you're still stuck in quarantine. And uh, I'm just grateful that we got uh, the crew we have here today to share. Love it, man. Well, let's, uh, let's get all the genius and value out of Bill Hillstad we can. We also have joining us in the leadership team, Rene Rodriguez, the leader of Amplify. What's up, brother? How's it going? <clears throat> it's going good, man. So when we were huddling up backstage, Bill Hillstead said of all the things that he was bummed that he's missed was the, the cancellation of an Amplify event in LA because he wanted to do it a second time. So uh, Renee, it's, it's a gift to have you on this call, dude. Thanks, guys. And uh, Bill, you've been instrumental in helping me during this time. So it's anything I can do to support what you're doing has been great. Uh, I can right, tell guys. you, everything I learned in this last six weeks, I can't wait to bring it to bear on your behalf as well. It's been a hell of a learning experience. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, guys. So something I learned at Amplify, I am going to frame Bill Hillstad and frame what we're going to go over. So what started this quest was Bill had brought up the idea several, several months ago that if you want to be a rock star mortgage professional, be the most well-known mortgage professional in the city that you live in, no better way to do that than leveraging Facebook to build an audience, you know, be intentional around the audience that you build. And then you need to engage that audience. You need to entertain them. You need to inspire them. You need to be attractive to them with the right post, the right way of promoting it. And then you need to generate leads. Like how can we get more leads? So Bill created, invented a mastery program where it was six weeks, two times a day, uh, it was $750 to sign up, and we had over 100 different realtors and loan officers sign up, and Bill has gone through this six-week course, two times a day, an hour and a half at a week. time, very intensive program, and, and so today he is going to unpack what has he learned, what are some of the success stories. Bill, we, we want to get, you know, like, what were some of the best headlines, what were some of the best tactics, and we're going to unpack that today. So that is the frame. With that said, let's bring Bill Hillstead onto the virtual stage. And uh, Bill, why don't you uh, tell us what you've learned and tell us a little bit about the process you went through from your perspective. Uh, uh, painful, I'll, I'll say that. I was committed to making sure that, that I figured out how to do this with people in this kind of fashion as opposed to normally, you know, it, I spend days with clients and, and it takes so much work and it's it's just, brute force has always been it before and so digging into this and figuring out what what people can absorb and what they can't i realized that i still probably overwhelmed and i can't wait to to make it simpler moving forward but we did through this and having to work through it with that many people and some of them had no clue what a facebook page was how to do it what a boost was others we're using click funnels and landing pages already and having to work with that many people really that uh, honestly it was just like a lab guys it was a chance to figure out exactly how do you make this a step by step by step not so much art not so much you need to kind of know this do this every time and by the end we had it down and i will share with folks today some guidelines we had it down to guidelines but we also learned all kinds of stuff that blew me away one facebook right now is far more cost effective than it ever has been i've always told people to expect to spend two cents per video view uh, uh that it would take at least a nickel a month per person in your database to nurture your database today that's between one and two cents uh, per month and as little as a quarter cent to reach people in your, your personal network. Uh, that was one of the big ahas across that many people. We saw how much more effective this is getting for us. So we're, we're killing that. 
uh, another one of the big ahas for me was, and this one's almost hard to explain, and, and I explained it to you, Dave, and you got it, and it, it still is hard for me, but you said, no, it makes perfect sense. We have always focused on our friends and my followers and whatever, and when I started working with some people that had big followings, you know, Ryan Grant's got like 6,000 friends uh, or followers, and and we started then doing the regular marketing where we were pushing this stuff out just to the universe and people were watching his videos. Well, those are the things that we've always said, those, those make your personal network. People who watch your videos, people who engage with your content, people who are friends like you, people that are in your database that you upload. That's, your, that's the modern version of a database. We just call it a personal network. But in doing that, we found that People who watch your videos, yep, because remember, when I put my video out there, any, anybody that watches uh, uh, three seconds, 15, I, and I can pick how much, but anybody that watches a through play on that video, uh, I capture into my network. Well, when we go to nurture that network with the regular weekly content, it's, it's between three and four times as effective or, or one third to one quarter the cost to nurture that network, those people can continue to consume your content and engage with you at three to four times the level of even your own personal friends. And we've always known that if somebody watches one of your videos and you capture them, they are between 20 and 30 times, 26 on average, 26 times more likely to do business with you than strangers. That's why we love the video viewers because you're building an audience of the people that are most likely to do business with you. But Dave, and you know, you said, no, it makes perfect sense to me. If they watch your video, they like you more than your own friends like you, but kind of freaking out on how easy it is to build a, a perfect audience. Perfect audience to me was always database, but now it takes a long time to build a thousand person database, but I can build a 10,000 person audience in 30 days. It's a piece of cake. And then they really continue to engage and, and comment and watch your videos. It's pretty exciting. It's a whole new shift for me. So a couple things I want everybody to write down and think about. We, we've always known that the value of our past customer database is pure gold. And I don't remember who it was that helped really redefine, you know, your past customer database. But guys, here's the people that matter most in terms of your profitability. Someone you closed a loan for, someone that gave you a five-star review and actually took the time to document that, and someone who has actually given you a referral. That is the most valuable person you possibly have. You need to measure them. You need to grow them. But we'd never thought of Facebook audience, you know, at least it's only becoming this new concept. And so you, you need to be thoughtful, like what's the size of your Facebook audience? And you need to be thoughtful, what percentage of those people are consuming your videos? And if they are, that's the next best thing. And the beauty of it is that there is science. Like it's not like an art. There is a science to build that audience. There is a science to engage with that audience. And then that audience can be just come this snowball mortgage lead generator that once you figure out the science of building it, nurturing it, and then putting in right hooks, uh, uh, tie downs, as Renee would call them, yep. you just have this snowball mortgage practice where you're getting consumer things. So I want to ask you a question, and then I'm going to go around after you answer it and get Renee's thoughts and Todd's thoughts. So what what are the metrics and the goals that you think a loan officer should have? Every referral based loan officer who wants to have a consumer direct strategy and they want leads from Facebook, what's the target on the audience? What's the target on the number of views that they need to get? And how much money do they need to spend? Like give us some like just targets Numbers. that everybody Numbers. can, can, you know, benchmarks, everybody can, can document and benchmark themselves against. All right, so uh, first number, database, whether it's past borrower uh, or, or just somebody you met on Facebook, whatever, whoever you're gonna market to, you need to hit them at least once a week uh, at the actual number, uh, 
best number that I've ever seen in a research uh, project was 33 times a year, three times a month. That's what it takes for somebody to remember you. Because remember, 74% of borrowers can't remember their originator's name 12 months after they close. Even though they like you, said they'd refer you and remember your face, they can't remember your name. 74, you got to stay remembered. So once a week, people need to see you in some sort of positive context once a week, no matter what. Now, when it comes to marketing, how big should my database be? Well, you want it to be as big as, as it can be, as long as you can afford to market to it. See, all marketing, no matter what, from the beginning of time, Facebook doesn't change it. All marketing is reach, frequency, impact. Always has been, always will be. No technology is going to change that. you got to have reach. You know, you ask, how many people actually saw me, saw, got reminded I'm in the mortgage industry this week? That's my reach. How many? Frequency. If they don't see me at least three times a month, if they don't see me or get reminded of me at least three times a month, they will forget you. People on average today need to see you 18 or 20 times before they would ever reach out to you, period. Without frequency, it won't work. And that's where most people's marketing breaks down because they're just going, oh, look, I got views. Look, I got, no, no, no. You got to have the same people see you over and over. You got to have that. And by the way, little just side nugget in there. I loved Facebook. Most people did because I could target people in the past. These are people who want to be first time home buyers. These are people who make this much money, whatever. That was awesome, way better than not targeting. But I got to tell you, with everything that's happening now and, and the numbers we're seeing, it's way better. Forget targeting. Just put your stuff out there with very little target and let people choose you and now retarget those. So the whole idea, it's always been two marketing functions, grow a database, nurture a database still is. Grow a personal network, nurture it. I want it to be as good as possible. So here's your numbers. When you're trying to get top of funnel, people who, who self-select you, you're going to spend, and you can do it cheaper. It, 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 we've got a lot of people that went through the course that, that had their through video through plays at uh, as little as a penny a piece. Yep. I, I got them for a penny, but if you put out screening content, content that kind of screens out people, it's not just something cute, it makes sure the right people are coming in. When we put up that mortgage related content, real estate related content, now I'm going to be spending five to 15 cents to add a new, a new contact in my database, if you will, a new prospect. So at that, if I'm spending that, let's say I wanted a 10,000 person audience, personal network, at a dime a piece, yeah, I'm gonna spend a thousand bucks. I don't have to spend it all at once. It might be over a month, it might be two months, but straight up, I'm trying to build an audience of the people that are most likely to work with me. So 10,000, that's a reasonable number. So what do I so need? Ten, oh yeah, so go ahead. Ten, so 10,000 is the target audience. Well, and, and the target is a month. whatever you can afford because 10,000, you're gonna spend, Call it as little as one, but plan on two cents, budget two cents a person. So if you can afford to put 200 a month into nurturing your database, 50 bucks a week on your post, then that's what that's a 10,000 person audience is perfect. Like one of the people that was in there and, and a guest on one, uh, uh, one of the episodes with me, Aaron Alvarez has 100,000 people in his audience, people that have viewed his videos. But it's one of the things, and it's like, wow, that's impressive. But if you can't afford with 100,000 people to put two grand a month into nurturing them or 500 a week, then you need to make that audience smaller. But the good news is on Facebook, now you just go, well, instead of people that have just watched a little bit of my videos, give me people that have watched multiple videos or all of my uh, 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 five minute video or this and you can raise the quality of your audience to make it match your budget. So whatever you can afford, Bill, I can afford a hundred bucks a week. That's what I can spend. Great. With your $400, the goal is to use, to use, call it a half a cent a week 
per person to nurture your network, to grow your, use the rest to grow your network until eventually that $400, that should allow you to market to about 20,000 people on an ongoing basis. Cool. Renee, any uh, takeaways you want to make people here or any questions for Bill? No, I mean, the, the biggest thing that I learned in working with Bill is that you need to work with a professional. I, I am, people think I'm a great marketer. I think maybe I'm a good branding guy and I understand marketing, but then there's the science behind it that makes my head hurt and working with Bill. I would have not, I still, without having somebody like him around, there's no way I can navigate that. This is what he lives. This is what he breathes. And so well, I share that because I want people to understand that the same way you rely on, on yourself to, to understand scripting and a mortgage coach to have the best technology instead of trying to recreate your own technology, it's just as important to have that kind of guru in your life, somebody that can navigate all of the nuances for this. And it is a, a plug and play, do as he says, and it's, it's going to work. And so, Bill, what have you found to, to be, if, if I'm listening to this and feeling overwhelmed, because nobody ever feels overwhelmed listening to your knowledge, but if I'm feeling overwhelmed, what's, what are the one or two things that you say, if I were just to do these one or two things, what would I do? Make sure that pick a budget. This is what I, this is what I can spend. Commit that you're going to spend it every week and put up something every week. That's, that's it. You have to make sure that you're going to, so I got a dog that's having a dream over here. <laughs> um, I don't know if you guys could hear that. So now it's I've got good. a budget. We have dogs. I'm spend it every, every week, no matter what. Put up a video every week that is for others. It's not for you. Don't be too self-serving. You only need to put up those right hooks a few times a year because you can use them over and over and over and over. So that's it. When you put up your content each week, and I will share with people or show them where they can go and get, and I'll send them a, a set of posting guidelines with the exact click by click, this is what you do. But then you just go in and, and choose to reach as many people as possible and target, target anybody who's watched one of your videos or engaged with one of your posts. When somebody, it's like, it's like if, if you and I were younger and single and hanging out in a, a you know, club or something, Renee, and you said, that girl over your shoulder's been checking you out. Well, same thing. They've been checking you out, only this is like, no, 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 I've got every camera in the place trained with eye tracking and they're monitoring everybody and I know exactly who's been checking me out or looking at it and exact, well, that's what Facebook's doing so you're just casting this net out there. As long as you're putting up one piece of content every week and it's content that gives, preferably content that, that gives to somebody else. There's a whole interview strategy to this that is nothing's more powerful than the interview or the video that is for, with, or about others. But if you put up one of those every single week uh, uh, and then you got to harvest the audience and you got to put real money into it, but you'll spend a nickel to a dime to harvest a really warm prospect that will now see you every single week. You will be in their feed as consistently as their best friend. And they'll never forget you. You will, you will be top of mind. And it's not an instantaneous thing. You can instant, you will be able to get leads and we go into that, but that's really it. Put up something every single week that people want to consume uh, and then hook. That would be my last thing. That's the one thing that I see from people more often than anything else. You have to remember that you have three seconds to get my attention. Boom. And I scroll by, scroll by, scroll by. What's going to stop me in this day and age and more make me pay attention to content you and to remember. And then. your face is the hook. If it's somebody who knows you, but if they don't know you, no. And they're not going to go, oh, there's a stranger. I don't know him. I think I'll read his post and see what it's all about. Maybe I should watch that video. Nope, not going to happen. Gone. <clears throat> you got to have uh, something to grab them. And it can be visual. And we went into visual hooks and how to use GIFs and, and movie clips or whatever. 
or, or pictures of your kids or dogs, or it can be a headline, or it could be, and honestly, Renee, I should have become an affiliate because Renee turned me on to Clipscribe and I had probably a hundred people buy Clipscribe. That's the greatest hook tool I've ever seen in my life because it lets me put my little headline on the top with pretty much zero effort, makes my video square, but you gotta have a hook. I look at all these great mortgage coach TCA videos people make, but nobody's gonna watch them because there's no, they don't give them a reason up front. So, uh, sorry, probably more than what you wanted, but post once a week, post once a week, make it something that you're not the hero that where you're giving and honestly attend amplify and learn how to, how to have influence, how to present better, how to do things that make people like you. If you post once a week and you put the money behind it and you collect, you got to set up the audience and collect the people that watch. So all you're doing is you're harvesting people who like you. And instead of picking people you want to market to, they're picking you and your network is growing. And pretty soon all your budgets just work in that network. And when you have a network like that, you'll do more business than you could possibly imagine. Is it true too that, I mean, cause you were telling me this, that, I was like, well, I just want to put great content out. I don't want to pay for it. But really, that Facebook is controlling that. And there really is no way around it without spending something. Is that true? No, it's, they've thousands of PhDs and public declaration that there's no free lunch on Facebook. When you hear somebody talking about how to do things organically on Facebook and Instagram, it works. Hands down, it works. You reach, when you do things properly, organically, 16% of your friends. That's it. 84% uh, of them are never, ever, they're never going to see you. That's, they're never going to see you. Not to mention you're violating their terms of service. And like, uh, I'll show some examples if you like, but like, uh, it breaks my heart when I see a client uh, uh, and friends and I was like looking at Ryan Grant's stuff and, and uh, he makes some great content and it goes out and he's got a huge, he's maxed out 5,000 people. And, and he gets two, 300, sometimes knock it out of the park with 500 views on a video. But then I start playing with it and I'm putting in 15, 20 bucks per, and I'm reaching anywhere from a couple thousand to 12,000 people per. And you realize I'm only spending a couple hundred bucks a month, but now he's getting over 50,000 impressions a month. It works organically, but it only works to the 16% of your friends on Facebook that are really actually friends, that really actually like you. People that consume, if they don't consume your content, if they don't engage, Facebook won't show your stuff to them. But when you do it with the money, you automatically go get, whether they're your friends or not, people who like you, people who consume your content, people who watch your, your video about closing costs or getting the best rate or pre-qualifying or, you know, is now a good time to buy or sell. And when they watch that, they're, they're pre-screened, they're in the market and they like you. It, it's just worth the money. And by the way, the good news about the money piece only 2% of the businesses in the world have ever advertised on Facebook and most step in and step back out. The costs on Facebook just during the Corona pandemic have dropped by over 30% because everybody's bailing and going away and it gets more and more complicated. Well, I like the cost because it keeps out everybody. Now it's my own private secret weapon and there's almost no competition out there. Nobody's doing it. So I like that I have to pay a little bit of money. If I can spend hundred bucks a week and that's enough to keep everybody else from playing because they all think they're going to do it organically. Cool. I'm glad that money's there. So, so guys, hopefully you made the note that whatever you're doing organically, it's 16% of what you have and, and you can't scale it as rapidly. If you are learning to do the things that Bill's teaching, you can get, a bigger percentage of the opportunity in the audience you have, and you can scale. So I'm gonna ask one question, then I'm gonna hand it off to Todd. Uh, it, guys, this is an, audi an audience question, because I wanna get a feel for how many leads are you generating on Facebook 
per month right now. So if you're not on Facebook, be honest. We want to know how many people in our community are not on Facebook. If you're getting zero leads, like you're not getting leads this month so far. You know, if you're getting a few, we want to know. Um, if you're getting leads every week, I want to know. And if you've got more than five, we want to know. So let us know where are you guys at right now in this audience of people that are listening live. I push this poll in Zoom. So for those of you that are watching on Facebook or the recording, sorry that you don't get to participate. But it does not look like we have a lot of people that are killing it and getting five or more leads. So Bill, what, what is a benchmark of excellence? Like, it looks like most of the people that are on this call right now, and that's probably why they're on it, uh, is they're like, hey, I'm not getting much. What, what should a mortgage professional have as a benchmark um, for how many leads they're generating monthly on Facebook? And then Todd, I'm gonna hand it off to you. First, recognize that my goal is to get to zero leads. Leads are what I use to fill in the gap until I have all warm referrals. I don't like leads. I don't like people that are flaky, that don't return my calls, whatever. You can create as many as you want. As soon as you go, oh, here's a post that generates leads for 20 bucks. If you need five, we put in a hundred bucks. If you need 20, you know, you, and you just 400 bucks. You can turn that knob as far as you want and it will always be at a profitable level and you just use it to fill in what you're not getting from warm business because the goal when I am nurturing all these contacts and my phone numbers out there and my emails out there and they can message me, I'm going to not see them as leads. I'm just going to get calls. It's going to be people reaching out to me. It's going to be messenger messages coming in to me uh, uh, and it'll have high conversions. So uh, really it's, if it's done right, it's just your choice. I, the clients that I work with that want leads, they pick the number of leads they want. So there is no benchmark. It's just picking the number. And it's also based on your ability to convert. If you're a machine and you can convert and you follow up and you've got call center and ISAs, great. You go for the cheaper leads and then they can work them to death. But what I found is with most people in this day and age that are busy, that have too much going on, that don't have a system in place to really work leads. Because remember, even like the Giants, like Loan Depot converts 1.73% of their leads and they're excited about that. And I mean, they're gonna follow up on 100 people to get 1.7 deals. So with the normal loan officer, like, you know, people that are out there or the normal realtor, we tend to do what we call screening uh, a lead screening by putting up posts that don't generate as many leads as possible. They screen people out or they pushes them to a video where they got to watch a long video and then they can opt in so that when uh, I've got a broker in Austin, Texas, that uh, last few weeks has been running about 130 bucks a lead. And you're like, holy crap. No, that's exciting because those are, those are listing appointment leads. We don't want somebody reaching out to Misty until they're ready to list their home. Let's talk about the marketing plan for listing my home. A listing appointment for $130, are you kidding me? Same thing with a prequal. I personally, uh, for anybody that's here today, I've shown it before, it's up in our support group. I'd be happy to share it with people again. I put together those 20 or 30 hooks, the headlines, the grabbers, for a, a total cost analysis, I would, I would go out and I would put together a video and I would test and it'd be fun to just do a nothing but a, here's a TCA ad creation class because I, cause I like to make it a little bit harder. I don't want anybody, I don't want everybody calling me. I want them to go, oh, I'm interested. Now watch this whole video understand the concept, make sure that you're ready to move. And if you're at this place and you are, and you're ready to then shoot me a message. And I love messenger leads because I, I get a hold of them all. I don't have to chase them down. It's a hundred percent connection rate. And I'd rather spend 50 bucks a lead, but if I could do 50 bucks per mortgage prequel and some people go, Oh man, that's crazy. That, that, no, sorry. Done. I'll take a hundred. Uh, I'm going to buy all I can. I'm selling $20 bills for 15 bucks. How many do you want? 
as many as you can get, you find that thing that works and, you, and that's the way leads work. But eventually, because you're growing your network, your database, he or she with the most friends wins, eventually you don't need leads. And then the last thing I'd say on leads, I much prefer to help realtors make leads and then get the business from them. It's like what Todd does with his real estate show where he interviews. It's not about the business you get from Facebook and the interviews. It's about the relationships you build with the realtors. So some lead gen stuff, I don't even care about the leads at all. I'm just trying to build the relationship with a realtor. Well, I'm grateful for that too. You've been working with Adam on our team and, and helping him get better at this. So I, I super appreciate that. And you kind of alluded to, I think the biggest question that people have in their head, you said you're going to share the hooks. Can you just give a couple of examples? Cause you said, ultimately we want to talk about um, for, with, and about other people, but that we're all failing on the hooks. So can you give an example of what a hook is and then how you would have it, where you would place it and whether you use Clipscribe or to show it or what that looks like? Yeah. Uh, so Sometimes I, it's, it's like if it's a video, uh, I know I've shown an example here before where I did a video about a training seminar for realtors and it was $192 a registrant for the first couple registrants. And then I took and I put a six second clip at the beginning where this farmer is fishing at a lake and a sheep comes running up and knocks him into the lake. And then I dropped a little headline on that that said Zillow's turning you into a bunch of sheep. Uh, uh, and then right as it knocks him into the lake, it says time to take back control of your business. I put that six second clip I found at the beginning of the same exact video. And the next day had 93 registrations at $3 and 81 cents a piece, 192 down to 380. So that's a visual hook, but just a regular headline hook, uh, uh, as an example, now let me find Zoom and I'll share my screen and show you and make this available to everybody. Uh, screen one. I hope I'm sharing the right screen. Uh, can you guys see a, a PowerPoint? Yes. Yep. Okay. We see it. So this is the one that I put up in our support group. Uh, I know we've shared it before, but you got to do something that gets my attention, a pattern interrupt, something to stop me if I'm interested. And if you just say, I can pre-qualify you for, would you like a total cost analysis? Something people don't know about. No, 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 no. You got you to you gotta, you gotta make me curious. You got to stop me. Something that doesn't make sense. He got the lowest interest rate on his mortgage and lost big time. What? What nobody teaches us about saving money on mortgages. That's an example of a hook because I always thought the lowest rate was, no, no, no. And all of these are just focused on that same concept of how to know what the best loan option is for you. Without a total cost analysis, it's hard to know where the hidden expenses are. What, what hidden expenses? Uh, never trust a lo mortgage loan officer who doesn't do this. Uh, uh, people don't trust loan officers anyway. It's perfect. Feeds right into it. Why interest rates and fees are not what's important when it comes to getting a mortgage. Huh? What do you mean they're not important? And these are educational kind of things, but when is the lowest interest rate a bad decision? All the time if, and by the way, the mind hates unanswered questions or incomplete sentences. People want to know what the answer to this kind of stuff is and, and they vary and they're all over and there's a lot of different ones, but the best headlines historically have always been the uh, uh, don't do this until you see this type of headline. Those just, if you're thinking about buying a home, uh, uh, make sure you know these three things first. It, but before you get them, never uh, uh, refi your house without doing this first, that kind of, without doing what? And then you just give them a little education. Well, the total cost analysis is a no brainer because candidly, you know, rates, fees, points, all the weird, that there's a lot of smoke and mirror. No, 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 total cost is the only thing that matters. You need to know this. If you're going to do a loan, you need to understand this so that you won't be a victim uh, uh, of an unscrupulous loan officer. And it's just an educational hook, but that, that stops me. One of the things that I did do for the 
group, uh, or actually one of the members, uh, um, because we created a community out of this. And now we got a couple hundred people that are all kind of supporting each other. And, and one of them put together, I had her go through some of the best advertisers <clears throat> and put together a list of all the headlines that outperformed that, that were in that, you know, one top standard deviation and, and what were all those top headlines. And it's fascinating to see what they are and and we have like i said that stuff is all posted but it's stuff that starts with numbers it's questions stuff that identifies me uh, uh as being part of a tribe uh, uh josh metal with doctors and loans tribal uh, uh, a home loan for a physician is not like a regular mortgage make sure you don't go to a re uh, or you don't do unless uh, um, I remember the best headline we ever did way back when was 92% of residents make the same critical mistake when buying their first home. Find out what it is and how to avoid it in chapter seven. Click here to download chapter seven now for free. That's the kind of stuff <coughs> that implies I'm going to get something that, and sadly, negative stuff tends to pull better. People want to know about the dirt. They want to know about the tricks, the scams, the risks, the beware. Fear of loss is 10 times greater than the hope of gain. So those are the ones that tend to pull, but something, something has to make me stop. And literally so, looking at some of them, it's as simple as somebody's headline was a uh, uh, holy crap, exclamation point. But that's enough to make so, me stop and curious. So guys, yeah. I've seen people ask for these slides. Uh, I believe they are in the file section of our YouTube channel and they're called Bill Hillstead TCA Video Brand Wrappers. So uh, Bill, would this still be the same slides as that you gave me a few months ago? Yep, yep, same, same. We have a full okay, headline guys. stuff that we do uh, uh, where we actually go through hooks and the different kinds of hooks and then have you know documents full of hooks but a lot of them uh, uh weren't my idea here's one of the guys reggie that uh went through the class and i think this was like in the second week uh um and one he took that little trick you know the migration turn your all your friends into followers and did what i said don't worry about doing this for you be able to go do it for realtors go do it for so he goes out to, and here's an attorney where he turned his 135 followers into 1,919 followers in a minute. That's an attorney that definitely owes him. But check this out. He put up a listing video for a realtor with a realtor, whatever. And look at his headline. OMG, check these condos out with emojis. Perfect timing to get into a new condo with. And then mind-blowing experience was his description of the, yeah, it's pretty sensational, but look at this, 90,400 views. This realtor cannot afford to ever work with anybody else, but not 90,000 views, but that's a, because who's going to just click on the picture, but OMG, check these condos out. It's just, it's good stuff, man. It, it just works. That's a good hook. Renee, real quick, I'd love to have you jump in because you just saw all those mortgage coach hooks. And I mean, this is right in your wheelhouse. Any, any things you want to point out or questions for Bill? Well, I, I completely changed my strategy with, with, uh, with that. I was just putting video out and I, I, you know, I like to focus on quality and Bill's like, great. You have quality video that nobody's watching. <laughs> and so uh, using Clipscribe, if, if you saw my, one of my last videos on stress, it just says, you know, the, the secret of delete, elite performers. And that was it. And it's amazing just how many more views, how many more shares, how many, how much more engagement there is. And he's right. It's, you know, we are paid, just pay attention to how you personally scroll through things. Not a single one of us is going, Oh, there's somebody I don't know. Let me give them a chance. Maybe there's something <laughs> good there. No, yeah, we're like, right? We're just not, we're, we're selfish and give us value now. And, and it's not bad. That's okay. That's just the world we're in. And so we need to learn how to capture and use the psychology. And, and Bill is 
I'm telling you folks, Bill is increasing your learning curve by years, years by going through and giving you these little secrets, these templates and everything. And what you get in the class is just even, even more. So I, I, I've said this for years. If you're a good salesperson, write a check to the marketer, either have them do it or have them coach you on it. But trying to be both of these things is like being a doctor and an attorney. It's very difficult. So just invest. It's not Renee, a lot of money. Renee, when, when can we do one? I, it just strikes me that one, one of these days we need to, at a conference or something, lock ourselves in a, a room for a day and figure out how to combine. Because if I knew what you knew, <laughs> if we could figure out how to use tie downs and hooks and combine them and create something that, that it takes amplify, takes the influence, but puts it into social video influence specifically what, cause that's where it always breaks down for people is what content do I put up? Because they all want to brag. They all want to sell and they, and they think it's about being professional. And, and I gotta be honest, I have a hard time understanding which ones are going to work the way they do and which ones aren't. The one on the screen right now was one of the students. David Allseaver, the cowboy lender. Dave got out of lending for years and just got back in and was very, you know, I, I don't know about this. Ah, shucks, Facebook. I, I'm just not a Facebook guy. And then he puts a post up in like week three and says, I still don't know about Facebook, but look at this. I got 15,000 engagements. And I said, congratulations. That's awesome. Imagine what will happen if you do that consistently for the next 12 months. You'll start to see business guaranteed. And he responded back and said, I got seven calls for loans in the last 24 hours alone. And you look at this, it's a cell phone video. He's not centered and all he's, it never mentions loans. What makes some of these work and what doesn't? And I would love to have you analyze or we should do something together just because I don't get the psychology of it like you do, Renee. Uh, I'm the marketer. I get the exposure, but what gets exposed? Just well, I'm, I'm down for that. I'm down for that anytime, my friend. And, and I think I know Dave has been pushing us to try to do that. He's sitting here going, I've been trying to get you guys to do this. <laughs> um, yeah, let's, uh, when California opens up, I'll just come out to you or come out here in Minnesota. We'll make it work. Uh, perfect. Perfect. I would love to. I just, again, it's what, what are the videos? How do we teach people to do the right cell phone videos, the right basic video and and stuff that makes people like them because it's all about no like trust if you're in front of people all the time you don't need to sell them if they know what you do they will choose to work with you and all the people that i see doing the best you know your aaron alvarez's and 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 whatnot they're they're just authentic and genuine and and they don't solicit that but every now and then every now and then you throw in one of those solicitations 20%, 10% of your content. Uh, uh, one of the headlines I saw in there that, that came out of uh, uh, Aaron was, um, I'm not bragging, I'm applying for a job. I wanna be your lender. And then he shot a video talking about how he got into mortgage and why he loves what he does. And I gotta tell you, those are almost always the best videos. Why you love what you do. Everybody wants to work with somebody who's passionate about their craft. But it's interesting how much better some videos work than others. And it's not, it's not good looking. It's not articulate. It's not well produced. It's, it's authenticity. It's, it's, and that's the, how do you teach charisma? And so, I can't, you can't. So Bill, um, Sean Guerrero was posting the Facebook group that after five weeks, he, he walked through spending 118 bucks and in, in the end, he ended up with two closed transactions. Um, do you have another class coming up? How would people sign up for that? Because um, <laughs> I know you're too shy to tell weeks. everyone. So I just might, yeah. I'm just calling it out. Like, let's get people the info because I think people are, are need to jump into what you're teaching. Yeah. You know what? I um, uh, thank you to all of you guys, my friends who encouraged me to do this. Uh, I wasn't sure. And uh, uh, working with some other folks like Kai McBride is helping me put together. Now, how do we really tighten this up? How do we make this a better class? Bill's still confused and overwhelmed. And that's where we started getting it down to posting guidelines, things like that. And we're gonna break it up into smaller classes. 
And I started yesterday, the day after we finished this thing, because it was quite consuming, putting up a website. It is not done, but up at twistedsocial.com. I am going to do another class uh, um, uh, starting on June 15th. We pulled it back to four weeks instead of six. That was too much for people. We added two open lab sessions a week where anybody can come because everybody's got their own problems, their own issues. So we've got two open lab times on Tuesdays and Thursdays where people can come and share their screen. We can solve your problems, work through your stuff, work on your content, want more hands-on than we had this last time. Uh, and then we're making it really just the intro. We're really driving home the, the, this is exactly how you build your audience. I want people to be able to start doing this from week one. More rules about how to post, but it's up at Twisted Social. If you don't want to spend 750 bucks and attend the class, uh, you can still sign up at Twisted Social just for the community and access to, uh, uh, you know, tips and content and whatnot. I will put up uh, uh, for anybody that does sign up because I want to help everybody, even if you can't afford to do the class stuff. Uh, things like this, here's your posting guidelines, exactly how to post. There's three kinds of posts, nurture, grow, lead gen, or combinations. How do I post for each of those objectives? This is growing my network. This is nurturing my network. And this is, like I said, it's exact. You're going to do it. You're going to optimize for this. You're going to click this button. You're going to set it to seven days. Lead gen post. This is what you're going to do. So that's one that I'd like to share with everybody just to give you some basic rules. And the other one that uh, everybody needs is uh, finally got around to putting this down because the biggest confusion point for most people is when do I use my page and when do I use my profile? Uh, so this is exactly how to use your page and your profile. Where do, because I see people doing it wrong all the time. Even people that know what they're doing and have marketing departments. Exactly. Where, where do I post first? How do I share? How do I get, this is how to get the most leverage the most reach so you're not reaching 16 percent of your friends you're reaching 90 percent of them uh, uh and it's just a everybody's forcing me to if you can't fit it on a page it's too complicated so this is exactly how to combine the two so those are the two things that i've got that i'll send out to anybody who registers if not the class thank is you. there with 750 thank you bill so guys we put a link to that in chat so robert thank you for putting a link to that and, and guys, you know, look at this. There's a, already a testimonial from Sean Herrero. Uh, actually, I got, I got lost in comments here, but I think it was like he spent 120 some odd dollars, went to his class, already has two loans that are closing, and I think he said five leads. So, uh, and then more importantly than all this, guys, is you're learning to fish. You know, you, now you know how to turn it up, turn it down, unleash the power of Facebook, and you know how to bring that leadership and that value to realtors. So you know how to use it as a referral building tool. And, and you know how to become the most well-known load officer in your market. So I love this. So guys, we got about 10 minutes left in this call. Renee, it's a gift to have you on this call, bro. And I want to make sure we get one little nugget from you, at least, you know, five minutes-ish, on the power of framing. One of the most important things I learned at Amplify, and I highly recommend guys, you sign up for Amplify. Uh, Renee, at some point, let people know where to go to learn about that. But could you tell everybody what a frame is so that they at least are more intentional about frame, message, tie down? Yeah, and thanks Dave. The, so a lot of times when you hear me talk about frame, we're thinking about the story that goes ahead of the message. Frame is a lot more to do with that. Look at the frame around this little box that we're going here. I've, I've spent a lot of attention and I've gotten a lot of criticism and advice and thoughts on what's behind me. Because in the past, I never paid attention. I always thought my frame was just what I was talking about. But in a digital world, the frame behind me, the books that I've chosen to display there, the fact that I've got my TED Talk memorabilia over there, or you can visually see a microphone. These are all parts of the frame or the fact that I invested in a DSLR to have a higher quality picture there. Those are underlying messages that send 
messages of quality. So there's that. If you're in a dirty space, that changes the frame of what's going on. So the frame is the, 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 the thing that surrounds the message you're trying to give someone. So if you're trying to give somebody a message of understanding the importance of Facebook marketing, you need to frame that up to talk about why, number one, why it's valuable and maybe how it's different from a sales process. Because for me, the difference was I was always coming from the paradigm of the mindset of everything that it came to from marketing, it was around database and managing, you know, people that were in my CRM, never thinking that there was a Facebook CRM database that was there and nurturing that has some fundamental principles that are there, but different applications. And that's that learning curve. And so just by me explaining that would be a frame, right? And so, you know, we look at Carl White who got here and he's clearly a learner and Todd Booksman learners because they've got books surrounding them, you know, and feeding their mind of all the, the, the information that, that's there. That's all part of the frame, you know, it's, and it's all critical, but the frame is what happens prior to it. And if you're not paying attention to the frame, if you're not paying attention to it, the example I always give is think about if I were to give, what's the one word that comes to mind when I say used car salesman, people say sleazy, they say all sorts of things, but that is the unconscious thought that comes out from the back of their mind and makes their way in front to be able to in affect the message either positively or negatively. So all things that get in the way from me communicating from me to you have to do with understanding frame. What if Dave's frozen? <laughs> By the way, now, now I'm feeling guilty about my frame but I'm <laughs> for the record. We'll I'm life. at my daughter's condo, helping her work on it uh, uh, this weekend. So I'm I'm literally sequestered in a little space. Um, it's like, damn, I need books. You guys all have great frames. That's all right, Bill. You're at your home. You're home away from home. So that was so great, Renee. I mean, I think it's always such a gift to the community when you remind them of that. Um, Dave mentioned you've got some upcoming amplifies. Can you quickly share what when those are going to be and how people would find out about them? Yeah, so th we've we've decided to start in Minnesota uh, because it's an area that I can control, and uh, we're reducing it to I think nine people, and so we've got a secluded area, Lake Minnetonka, uh, and it's June. I look at my calendar back here. Uh, twenty four to twenty six is the first one, and then we're also looking at July nine to eleven. But if you just go to see Renee speak forward slash amplify, I'll put it in the links there. Uh, we've got some more, and if people are interested in their city and their city's open. I I'm willing to travel. So uh, this is a time to come back and start doing this. And I think we're adding in a big component. Bill and I have been talking a lot about this is not just amplify in communication here, but how do you communicate in this little window here in the use of hands and facial expressions, the importance of lighting, the importance of a good quality audio, all of those things are critical in communicating a message right now. Because right now you can't see my hands, but my hands are a critical component of what I'm saying. So I've got to move my influence zone up here, which is different. It's a new behavior. Am I looking at you guys here? Or am I looking at the camera? Now I'm connecting with you, but I'm missing your facial expressions down on my computer screen. All of those are new challenges when it comes to communicating in this new world. I think that's huge. And so, you know, what else would you say? Obviously, Bill, you've been to Amplify. I mean, what, what would you say to people about it um, so that they kind of understand what it is and why they should go? Everything, everything in your life comes down to influencing people, your relationships, sales, period, your ability to influence, to communicate your message, to get people to take action, do what you want is probably the single largest determinant of your success and happiness, uh, at least one of the biggest things. And you cannot, you cannot underemphasize the importance of investing in that. That's why, that's why I want to go back and see it again. That's why I want to work with Renee and help push his message out there more. That's, that's as important as anything else you can do. Yeah, I got to have leads. Yeah, I got to have, but if, if you are influential, if you are charismatic, if you do get people's attention, and honestly, it just comes down to the before and afters. If, you, if anybody ever sits through it and watches nine other people, who they are in the beginning and who they are in the end, it's just the transformation is over. Even for the really impressive ones coming in, 
it's it's mind bending. Thank you, Bill. I'll say this too that I'll add, Bill, that the thing that was missing in Amplify was we come away with these amazing quality videos and these amazing stories to a group of people that don't know how to use them. And that's the that's the merging, I think, of you know, Amplify 2.0 is saying, here's we're teaching how to tell a great story, how to tell your story, and we're giving you the quality so you can stand out through quality. But now we're giving you a strategy through Bill's method to be able to actually get people to watch the video. It's a great sales yeah. tool when you bring people to it, but now how do you get a mass audience to do that? That's where Bill's genius comes in. And, and guys, I'm currently reading a book called Hitmaker, which is amazing because it talks about the quality of the content and the distribution of the content. And if you want to be a mortgage rock star, you need to understand the game, and that is the creation. So how cool is it to get the uh, Zoom bombing from Carl White, dude? What's up, Carl? Yeah, no kidding. Hey, bro. OG. Did I click the wrong link or something? I just clicked the link. I, I thought I was just an attendee. <laughs> dude, dude, you're first of all, you're always invited to be on these calls, man. And uh, it's awesome to see your face, brother. Well, I, I uh, honestly, I, I just I, I got an email and I clicked the link and here it was. And I thought, you know, did I click the right link here? So uh, I appreciate no, all you, you guys. I just... My, my main purpose of being here today is I'm doing a screenshot of Bill, Todd, Dave, and Renee all on one screen with me in it. And so I'm taking a screenshot of it. <laughs> it definitely up my social status. So uh, uh, good stuff, guys. Sure, I got to sure get that one. I want that too. picture. This is a little powerhouse <laughs> right here. Oh, you know, what a fun group. Uh, what a fun group to have. How, uh, hey, Carl, how did the signups go after you were here last time uh, for your – uh, website is that still is that still open because that's something that people can jump in on uh you know we're we're uh it, it is i don't i don't want to again i i i i hope i click the right link and i apologize if i did you're 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 all good you're all good carl all right. so so thank you for being here and then you know renee thank you guys we got three minutes before we're going to wrap this up i hope the takeaways for everybody are be more intentional like if you want to get consumer direct business which I, I really recommend that you do. Uh, not only will you close more business, but you'll be more valuable to your referral partners. Uh, and if you want to be that local mortgage rock star, you, you need to understand the game of distribution. You're only gonna get about 17, less than 20% of the impact of Facebook if you're only doing Facebook organic. If you wanna scale and you want to have predictable results, you need to master this stuff. And, uh, and Bill just shared some great ideas and great ways of doing that. Be sure to click on his link. I, I have an investment in this because I want mortgage coach loan officers, anybody that's part of our membership that gives a family a total cost analysis, I want them to crush the competition. I want them that when you're competing for a loan, I want the mortgage coach loan officer to win. When you're building a brand and who are the most well-known, most well-respected loan officers in every local market, I want that to be you. I want that to be the mortgage coach loan officer. So, you know, that's why I interview Carl. That's why, you know, Renee is part of this community. And, and Bill, you, you crushed it today, brother. Uh, Bill, with two minutes left, what's, what's the last thought you have? Like, what do you want to leave people with as it pertains to being the local mortgage rock star? Wow. Well, the one thought. Um... You know what? It's it's just to step in and do it. Even the people that are in the class, the ones that weren't afraid, that spend a little money. It's you don't do the business so you can create the budget to market. You you put in the budget so that you can do the business. It's not big investments, but look, my average runs a tick under three hundred bucks to create a loan. Two hundred eighty six bucks. Uh, you might start at a thousand, but you got to put some money in there and you got to be willing to get embarrassed. The good news is you can exclude your friends. Like what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. You can say, no, 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 only market to strangers. And so if you're a jerk, at least your friends won't know, or you look like an idiot, you can look like an idiot to strangers, but you're going to look like an idiot to people who like idiots. Doesn't matter who you are. The face for radio, I hear it all the time. Oh, I'm not charismatic. I'm not, doesn't matter. You're going to find, when you take this approach of harvesting audience, you're going to find the people that like you. So just 
get in, do it, make the mistakes, it'll get better, and put the money into it. There's only three things, reach, frequency, impact. You gotta reach them, you gotta do it regularly, you gotta do it impactful. I can only help so much with the impact. They're tap into resources like Carl or Renee or Dave, you should teach interviewing classes because interviews are by far the best videos. No doubt. That's actually a really good idea. I think maybe I will uh, dedicate some uh, Tuesdays and some Fridays to teaching the art and the science because there is science. There are formulas for influence. There are formulas for getting the best out of people. Uh, so, dude, that was that was awesome. So we are going to wrap this up. Coach Todd Bookspin, any win by noon takeaways or any leadership you want to bring as we close out today's call? Well, we, we had a few rock stars here on the call today. And if you're going to actually take what you heard here today and take action, you've got to schedule some time to get it done. So look at your calendar. You've got a holiday weekend coming up. Squeeze out some time. Watch the previous interviews that Dave and I have done with Bill, right? Um, learn more about Renee. Renee has got so many great videos that he's posted up. Watch the interviews that we've done here. Obviously, Carl popped back in. His call from two Fridays ago or three Fridays ago was amazing, and he gave away a lot of free content there. I would encourage you guys to do it. But if it's one thing to think about doing it, it's another thing to take action. And the way that I see people take action is to actually write it in your calendar, put it into your phone, and set an appointment with yourself and make it happen. Um, that's how you're all going to grow. So as always, it's so great to have you all here. It's great to have our guests. Thank you guys for being here, Dave. It's always fun to uh, be here with you. And we look forward to seeing you here next Friday for some more Mortgage Coach Productivity Mastermind. Right on, guys. And then we're going to have top realtor Bill Glenn on Tuesday at 9 o'clock. And he's going to teach how to be contagious to realtors. So you're going to hear from a realtor that closes over 100 units, 100 sales a year who mentors a lot of realtors that do over 200. He's going to talk about how can you be contagious and how can you get more meetings with realtors. So see you at Tuesday. Have a great extended weekend and take care, everybody. Good Call's to see you, wrap. Carl. Good to see you, see Carl. You I'll see you guys. Thanks, Carl. So good to see you, dude.